Ready, set, go. All right, so what I'm going to do first for this game is I'm going to make the, I'm going to actually make my function for my level one first. Now that we know how to do a lot of these different parts, I'm going to create a function right from the get-go that's going to be my level one. The level one part of the game where we're chasing the ball. And it's good form here to say each of these is this is end of level one. I'll say this is my end of draw. And just to be kind to every function, we'll say end of setup. So in this case, I'm going to start off just with um, some, some text. I'm going to make it be the width divided by two. Whoops. We'll say, <laughs> let's give it some text first. Say here's a level one. I'm going to put it right down at the bottom. So I'm going to say height minus, I don't know, 20. I think that'll give it to me. Now, if I run this, I shouldn't see anything show up over here yet. And that's because I'm not calling this, this function level one. I'm just going to copy that now and put it into the draw. And now if I run this, there it should be showing me level one down at the bottom. Um, two things I'm going to do since I'm going to do a lot of text and we have maybe a bigger space. I'm going to increase this so we're, we've got a little bit bigger space to work with. And I'm going to add in like a text align so all my text is in the centered format. And text size, we'll do 20 just to make it easier to see. All right, so there's our level one down here at the bottom. And that's just letting me know that this function is actually running. Now, if I want to, I can go ahead now and create all the other variables that you know apply to the ball. So I'm going to do those up here. I'm going to say, um, I make variables up here at the very top that makes them global. That means all the other functions can use these variables that are up here at the top. The global functions happen all the way up there and before anything else. So I'm going to say var uh, ball x. And I'll just start them off right in the middle of my space here. I'm going to say 300 ball y. And I'm going to include one called um, ball size. And I'll make that one be, I guess, 40 to start off with. Now, when I run this one, <coughs> still nothing should be happening, but I shouldn't have any errors either. Inside of my function level one here, I'm going to tell it to draw an ellipse. And this is going to be at the ball x, ball y, the locations we picked up here and then my ball size, ball size. So that'll make it a circle, I hope. All right, so there's our initial ball that we can start off with. And if we were gonna try to have it, make it so that you could run around and touch it and make it show up, this is where I need to find a way to know whether or not the mouse is inside of that location. So. Here's where we started to add in that variable called distance to ball. And we made that distance to ball be between two points, the two points being DIST, that's a reserve command for distance. It's going to calculate the distance for us and say distance to ball is going to be the center of the ball, which is the ball X, ball Y. And then the mouse x, mouse y. So the location where the mouse is and the location of where the ball is should give us that distance. Now, when we did this the first time, I had it actually draw a line between these two points. And it's not a bad thing, especially for level one, to maybe point out where that is. And it's, I'm really just drawing a line to the same two points I'm getting the distance from. So me being a lazy coder like many coders. I'm going to go ahead and draw that. And now you can see here's the line that it's drawing to wherever the ball is. 
This is definitely helpful if you're trying to find it or if the size changes over time. But right now it doesn't do anything based on that. And we're not printing out what the, what the distance to the ball is. What we can do here though is we can say, let me put a couple spaces here so I can scroll. But I'm gonna say inside of here, I'm gonna say if, um, We'll use it at right after the distance to ball. I'm going to make an if statement here that says if distance to ball is less than the half of the ball size. So we're looking for just like the radius of the ball. So we're going to say uh, ball size divided by two. Then we want it to go to a new place. So we're going to say our ball x equals random width that puts it just somewhere if you spell width right somewhere randomly on the screen and we'll do a ball put your hands in the right place ball y random height all right so now we click this one we run it and as we get close and touch it the ball should go jump around and we've got that simple part of the game almost set. It's not keeping a score yet and there's no way to really win or lose. But let's uh, let's at least right here at this very point put in a score way to score. So score will equal the score plus whatever value you want here. We can make it be one or we can make it be 10. Here we'll make it just be one for simplicity. And I need this score variable to be something that's up here. Our score equals zero for the start. So now we run it, still no errors, but we're not showing our score anywhere. Let's do that. And I can show the score right now. I can do that one actually in my draw. I'll, I'll have the text for the score show up in the draw. We'll say text score or let's let's make it so you know what that number is. Score space plus the variable. I really want to just put this in parentheses to make it neat. The score, and then we'll put that we'll put that up at the top or near, just just uh, we'll go down forty. So we'll go with divided by two is where it is on the left, right in the middle. And then we'll put it down just 40. So let's see if that worked. Score is zero, score is one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Now I've said on a couple of the other occasions, if you wanted to do something different at a, at a point, don't put your if statement inside of your draw, but inside of your level, that's where you kind of want to say, if the score is greater than a certain number, that's probably where you want it to, to show up. So if I want to say if if score is greater than five, then you can tell it to go to like the level two, or you can say level two, uh, or change your game state, or do something like that. In this case, uh, I can just make it be something really annoying, like random 255. So that'll make it when that when that thing happens, then we know we're at, oh, it didn't do it, did it? What do we, oh, it's just, it's just random. It's not actually doing, it, coloring anything or doing anything. There we go. Uh, that should make it like a black and white flashy. Yeah, there we go. So it's greater than five, then we get this this horrible, <laughs> horrible thing happening. So this is a way to get yourself to get to a new level, but I don't really want this to be doing this yet. And I'm going to stop the recording of this one and then this will be part one. So this gives you that initial game set.